Hi everyone. Following the completion of the fifth round of the FA Cup, we now know what blank game week 29 looks like. So the likes of Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United won't be participating as a result of subsequent FA Cup games in the quarterfinals. So the teams that will be participating over the course of the 16th and 17th of March will be Burnley against Brentford, Luton against Nottingham Forest, Fulham against Spurs, and West Ham United against Aston Villa. Now, for many FPL managers, they may have planned weeks and months for blank game week 29, only for them to realise, actually, they don't have enough coverage of players as a result of the blank, as a result of red flags or yellow flags. And then some have actually contemplated, actually, we're going to free hit so that we can bridge the lack of player coverage. And then, to my dismay, you had a number of FPL experts who have completely dismissed the notion of a free hit in blank game week 29. I was completely taken aback by some of the comments that I've seen on social media regarding anyone that wants to free hit in blank game week 29. The reality is, there's no rule in FPL that forbids you from using your free hit during a blank game week. Don't let them tell you otherwise, and ultimately do what's best for your own team. Now, of course, if you had in silo a double game week and a free hit, as opposed to blank game week and a free hit, the chances are you'll score significantly more points in the double game week. But then you might have a situation whereby to field 10 or 11 players in a blank game week that you might have to take a minus 12 or a minus 16 over the course of two to three game weeks. Is that really worth it as well? And at the same time, there's also a double game week still to come not long after the blank and then another double game week that is due to come towards the penultimate game week of the season as well. So how would you factor that in as well? So, from my perspective, I haven't fully decided at the time of recording whether I'm going to free hit in blank game week 29, but I want to show you at least an illustration of what a blank game week 29 free hit could look like. And before we continue, if you're able to like, share and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. So, like I've said, this illustration that I'm going to show is simply an example of the kind of team that can be picked for blank game week 29. And I'm not committing myself to it, but it just gives you an indication on the kind of players that you can pick. And of course, we are limited to the kinds of players that are available. But at the same time, if you've got no other option, then at least keep it in mind. So first of all, I'm going to come on to Brentford. I'll pick Flecken as my starting goalkeeper. He may not necessarily be keeping a lot of clean sheets. And of course, Brentford have this horrible run of form where they've only won one game in their last six. But he's racked up a lot of save points during that time. In fact, he's also had a double digit haul in that time as well. So with his fixture and with the options that are available, I think he has to be the starting 11 goalkeeper. But not only that, I'm going to double up with my Brentford defensive options. And another player that I'll pick from their team is Sergio Reguilon. And with Reguilon, again, not really keeping him for the clean sheets, but it's more so the attacking prowess. Since he's joined Brentford in that short space of time, he's already clocked up two assists and a clean sheet. So in he comes as well. And as for the sub goalkeeper, I'm going to restore Minsky. He's got an important fixture against Nottingham Forest, really a must win for Luton Town. So happy to pick him as my sub goalkeeper. And the lessons I've had with Luton Town, I've probably overly trusted them um, as the season has progressed to my dismay where I where I had double Luton defence against Sheffield United that backfired as well as the subsequent double game week so I wouldn't really double down on two Luton assets but in this instance because I've got 
Doughty already. I'd probably start Doughty against Nottingham Forest, but definitely not Kaminsky and not double Luton defence. Again, Doughty, it's more, more so just for the attacking prowess. And then on to my other uh, defensive asset, I'll go to Aston Villa. And my Villa defender for this illustration will be Matty Cash, who actually started the season. And then there was a period where he just stopped playing altogether, had cameo appearances. But of late, he's actually started three games in a row. So it could be somewhat of a rotation risk. But for the purpose of this illustration against West Ham United, I'm happy to pick him in this squad of 15. So uh, the fourth defender I'm going to pick, it'll be a West Ham defender and it's going to be Emerson who has also showed a significant amount of uh, attacking prowess especially uh, in the recent game weeks and he's been a player who in the past has been a cameo player but he's been getting regular starts of late so in he comes as well and for my fifth defender going to go to Fulham most likely will be a sub three for me and that is Robinson so with the options I've got, it's really from the defensive standpoint, just hoping that the three starting defenders I pick um, do pick up attacking returns in their matches. So on to the midfield and attack. I'm going to be heavily stacked with my midfielders. I'm going to pick five midfielders. So of course, I'm going to go for Son. I'm going to go for Gerard Bowen. I'm going to go for Douglas Louise. I'm going to go for... Richarlison, I know he's red flagged at the time of recording, but from what I understand, he could potentially be available before this game week. So probably a bit of a risk. But if I can't pick Richarlison, it'd probably be like a uh, another player like Kulisevsky, or I, I could probably go to a Ross Barkley and um, upgrade, let's say, a Robinson to a Udogi. So that's an option there as well. And the fifth midfielder in this uh, illustration going to Spurs of course I'm going to have triple spurs in this illustration it will be James Madison so in he comes as well into this draft now I did mention Kulisevsky just want to make sure he has been a regular starter okay sort of so could be an option especially if Richarlison is not available so I'll restore Watkins I'll restore Tony as well because it makes perfect sense to have them in this free hit and then the final player in this free hit, going to go to Luton Town again. And someone who's been somewhat of a surprise and actually was in my first draft of the season, but has kind of gone under the right radar, scored over 100 points. And it is Carlton Morris, seven goals and six assists this season. I'm not going to start him in this free hit, but he would be a first sub option. So again, with this free hit, you could probably ignore the uh, 10.8 million in the bank, but it would effectively be a 3-5-2 with Watkins and Tony up top, Son, Bowen, Louise, Richarlison, Madison in the field with Regulion, Cash and Doughty starting with Fleppen in goal. So again, it's just an option because I know that in my instance, I could probably get away with not having to free hit in 29 but I haven't completely ruled it out but then the question I have to ask is how many players can I field for blank game week 29 at the moment and with the, the players I've picked right now I've got three Luton players already um, but in my case it's not Morris it's um, Ross Barkley and I've got Watkins and Tony as well so like I've said it could it would be a minus four or a rollover in 27, a minus 4 in 28, and a minus 8 in 29, or a minus 4 just to get 10 starting players. So the question I have to say, is it really worth it? So I could not commit to a free hit ahead of game week 27, because I've got the five players, and I've got that flexibility to not take a deep hit at this moment in time. But with the players that are available, it doesn't look too bad. I get it. It looks a bit lopsided without City, Liverpool, Arsenal uh, cover, without a shadow of a doubt. But especially with the way Spurs are playing, you'd expect goals 
for sure in their match against uh, Fulham. And same with Brentford as well against Burnley. Luton Town at home can be a box of tricks. And West Ham against Aston Villa just seems like goals galore as well. So there you have it. That's just an illustration of the kind of team that you could field with a free hit in blank game week 29. Of course, play FPL as you deem fit. And if you feel that you can't stretch to a number of hits between now and blank game week 29, then perhaps this illustration could be of interest. So there you have it. If you're able to like, share and subscribe, that will be greatly appreciated. Take care and all the best.